so I have some somewhat bad news for you guys. Honestly, probably not all that bad for you guys because it probably saved you like a couple hours of awful video, boring stuff. Anyways, um, I lost an entire SD card worth of footage, uh, imported it onto the computer, deleted it off the card, and then it just disappeared out of the computer. Uh, I figured out what happened, how it happened, so I know how to prevent it in the future. Um, so just one of those things. But uh, the bad part is now there's some stuff that probably won't really make sense. And uh, so I was just going to shoot this quick video and kind of go over some of the things that got deleted accidentally. And so that way it kind of makes some more sense. Um, I can't really... This video is being shot like present day and the clips you're about to see after this are like literally three months ago, four months ago. And so I can't really, I can't really show you without spoiling the next part of the video, I guess. Not that, it, not that it really matters. This isn't like some TV show, you know, spoiler alert. But anyways, um, since I got the truck, the frame in the back has been broken. Um, it's behind the leaf spring. I don't know, it's just the part that like holds the hitch on on the one side. I never really cared too much about it. The previous owner put like a piece of angle iron that was like weirdly bolted between the two broken pieces. I was like, good enough. I mean, it held. I, I hauled a lot of weight with that trail with the uh, hitch there. Never had any issues, but I wanted to get it fixed. Um, so in the process of fixing that, I had some issues with the fuel tank. I just, I started having, you know, like, I couldn't find parts for them. I needed the both tank straps had completely rotted off. It had like a skid plate that was holding the tank on and that skid plate was just like gone. So I had two ratchet straps holding the fuel tank in. I could not find parts for that thing. I could not find, I searched high and low for the fuel level sender, could not find it. There's even like a shower head thing inside of it. And I even went to the Ford dealership and they could not find that part. They told me I had to buy like the entire, I don't, it was gonna be a lot of money. Uh, but I did find the part number. Maybe I'll leave a link in the description if I remember for that. Uh, if you're looking for a new shower head for your factory Ford fuel tank. Um, so anyways, couldn't find parts for it. Um, and then what really did it was I lowered the tank to work on the frame because I was kind of cutting and welding and I didn't want to burn a hole through my plastic fuel tank. So I had it on like a bottle jack and the tank was still like three quarters full. And I went to jack the tank up to put it back in the truck and my bottle jack slipped and the whole tank just came smashing down on my arm because my arm was underneath it, you know, naturally. Um, the best part was too, all I, I had to disconnect the fuel fill and I just shoved a rag in it. I was like, that'll be good. So when it came slamming down, it just like shot diesel fuel across my driveway. That was really awesome. So now I'm like covered in diesel fuel. The bottom of the tank was just covered in soot because the old exhaust used to just blow on the bottom of the tank. I'm covered in diesel fuel soot and like my arm is crushed. But anyways, uh, it ended up ripping the uh, the fuel lines off the top of the thing and I was just like, you know what, forget this. It's not worth it. So I decided to build my own fuel tank. Man, my arm is getting sore from all the, the motions here. <laughs> anyway, so I decided to build my own fuel tank. Um, so that's really all you missed. So you're you're cutting in about halfway through the fuel tank build, which is gonna be right after this. Bye. Alright, so I think last clip I shot, I was like talking about the fuel tank and maybe I'll build one. Here it is. Um, it's not done yet, but it's something. Um, According to the internet calculations, this thing is going to hold 60 gallons. I was like, I was trying to make it as big as I could, you know, because the 20 gallon tank doesn't last very long. And uh, so I took all these measurements and then I did some calculations online and originally it was going to be 18 inches tall and it was like 76 gallons. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to fill that. So, um, that mixed with some other things, I ended up being a little short on the steel because you can only get a 10 foot length, so I had to bring it down. So now it's only 16 inches tall, 
27 wide and 32 long. So uh, it's got two baffles in it. And then there's like another little thing here. Uh, put a sump on it. It's a very small sump. It looked bigger in my head when I was making it. But I still have to put the other end on. Uh, I'm not real great with this thin sheet metal. I like welding really hot. And so things kind of warped. It's not going to be perfect, but hopefully it'll hold fuel for a little bit anyway. Once I get the other side on, I got to pressure test it, make sure it holds air. Uh, we got our new sending unit in. And then we also have a return fuel port here. And then that's just kind of a spare port. Not sure exactly if I'll need that yet or not, because I'll probably end up using a, a vented fuel cap. And then I gotta drop the old tank, make some modifications in there so I can, we can fit this new tank in and figure out how I'm gonna get it to, how I'm gonna bolt it in. All right, so I figured I'd just give you a shot of inside the tank before I close it up, because chances are I'll forget what it looks like and then I'll have like a problem and I'll be like, I don't know, can't remember what I did in there. So uh, you can see the baffles, lots of holes around the outside and then two big ones in the middle. The only thing I wish I had done differently is I made both baffles exactly the same, which is kind of nice because like I can reach all the way down to the bottom of the tank. But now it's got, you know, if I had, I had uh, put the holes at different spots on both baffles, then it would work a little bit better. But still, this will help hold the tank together and help keep the fuel from sloshing too much. This is the uh, my fuel return. Comes all the way down to the bottom of the tank. That way we're not aerating the fuel. And then uh, where my sump is, I got two, two holes here. Let fuel down into there. So... It ain't the prettiest, I mean, looking at it, <laughs> can you tell it warped a little? But the other side looked the same as this, just kind of warped, and when I put the end cap in, I was able to kind of pull it all back together and make it look a little bit prettier. So, you guys ever screw something up, but like screw it up perfectly? This is like that, but different. So basically what happened was, I took some measurements of the space back here for this fuel tank, I probably could fit this size. What I'll do is I'll take these measurements, I'll get the steel, and then as I'm building it, I'll see if it'll fit. And then that didn't happen. And I basically just built the whole fuel tank. And uh, now we're kind of running into some issues. Nothing major, just uh, it's a little bit larger than life, you know? So, um, the frame on both sides, this last like seven or eight inches, it flared out to like, I don't know, an inch and a half, two inches wider. Not sure exactly the reasoning behind that, but I didn't really see any structural need for that. And uh, my tank did not allow for that, so I had to cut it off top and bottom. And I also had to cut into this frame slightly, which I still have to do a little bit more clearancing because it's, especially on this side, it's still hitting. But um, this side was a pain because I just did all this frame reinforcement. And uh, I, I reckon I should have done that like after this. So, but you know, live and learn. So I ended up having to cut through like an inch of solid steel on this side to get that out of there. It's my homemade trailer hitch here. Someone basically got a receiver and just kind of welded it to this piece of angle and then got two pieces of angle iron it welded them to that receiver to add a little extra rigidity and it stuck stuck way out past the uh, other side of this so we had to trim that down some so I don't I don't do a heck of a lot of towing but um, I don't think that that would really affect my uh, my hitch rating here you know it's still a class 3 <laughs> I tried to get this out the other day. You can't even get the pin out. Well, I screwed up again. We got to trim so it'll kind of it fits in there much better now. Um, so what I did this time was uh, I have air going into the tank right now. So if you hear something hissing, that's what that is. Could probably shut that off. So, anyways, 
the uh, tank is a pretty tight fit. Um, hangs down pretty good as well. Um, might go a little higher. It's obviously it's not like sitting in their level. I just kind of had a ratchet strapped in there just to kind of see what it'll look like. And I wanted to get my fuel fill hooked up. So I was planning on coming out the back, you know. So I that's the whole reason I had the air going so that uh, it would push any metal shavings and junk back out the hole instead of going into the tank. So, um, so anyways, drilled my hole and uh, pretty much right after the uh, hole saw went through, I was like, how am I gonna get the tank in if I put this here? Basically the plan is I got this thing here and I'm gonna somehow Put that in there something like that maybe just to get it maybe tip it up even just a little more i don't really put it at an angle like that but anyways if i weld this in there i'm not gonna be able to get the tank back in so as much as i don't want to do this because i'll never be able to remove the tank i guess we'll pull the tank back out and get it painted except for right here <laughs> and then we'll put the tank back in i'll weld the pipe in with a fill, fill neck, weld that in, and then uh, paint that and call it good, I guess. This whole project has gone on long enough. Just need to get it done at this point. So yeah, we st I still have to figure out how I'm going to uh, hold it in the truck. I started to build this uh, frame here. And uh, I didn't buy enough angle iron, so that's about as far as we made it with that. I don't think I did much filming on the uh, fuel tank here after I kind of like started making a video. Um, there was kind of a rush to get this done and in so that I could use the truck. And uh, so I didn't really film much of it, but I ended up cutting an inch and a half out of the length of the tank. It fit in there, but it was just like really tight and it was a pain to get in and out. And then I like drilled my hole here for my fuel fill. And then I realized, you know, I'm not gonna be able to get it in and out. And so I ended up pulling the tank out. I cut an inch and a half out of it, welded the end back on, welded up the hole that I had already drilled in the end and uh, painted it, prayed for the best. And uh, I ended up just making these tabs here the frame kind of kicks up or kicks down here so the front ones are just the front top of the tank is flush with the frame and then back here I had to kind of kick them up a little bit and uh, I just got like some rubber crap in there keep vibration down or whatever keep it from rubbing through the tank and then on the bottom I made this frame out of angle iron and that uh, just kind of holds the tank the uh, angle iron only goes under on the back and the front. The side piece here I put the other way just to kind of... I honestly don't know why I did that. I should have done it the other way so it holds the tank, but whatever. It seems to be working. It doesn't move. And then we just got some some uh, threaded rod and cranked her tight. There is also a brace in the middle that kind of holds the tank as well. So I don't think it's going anywhere. And I actually filled it the other day. I filled it in two stages. I still had the old tank in the uh, bed of the truck and uh, so I didn't put more than like 20 gallons in this tank. My fear was that if it leaked I'd have nowhere to put it you know and then I'd end up with like 50 gallons of diesel fuel spilling down my driveway. So I put 20 gallons in the rear tank that way if there was a leak I could pump it into the into the other tank and you know we wouldn't have any issues. So I've put 20 gallons in it, it didn't leak, and then I hooked it all up and went back down to the gas station and put another 33 gallons or something like that. Actually, I got 25 the first time, so 25 and 33, I don't know what that is, but that's how much fuel it holds. So, and uh, so far, there's no leaks, so, and it seems to be working well. All right, well, I've rambled enough. 